My name is Patricia Santana. This is my second novel called Ghost of El Grullo, and uh, we follow uh, Yolanda's adventures as she enters college. She goes to the university. She comes from a Chicano barrio, and um, it's, it's a bit of a cultural um, adjustment for her. So I'd like to read this one scene where she goes to a beach party with some of her college classmates. It was dark now and someone had finally gotten the firing started, the planks of wood tossed in for a bonfire. We were all sitting around in a circle, good-looking surfer-type guys with blonde hair and pretty, perfect-looking girls with straight hair down to their butts, wearing skimpy cut-off shorts and halter tops or baby doll blouses in colorful paisley patterns. I was the only one in jeans and a little sweater top for the cool evening breeze and feeling, compared to these people, dorky. One guy was talking about his spring break plans. His parents were forcing him to go on a family ski trip to the Swiss Alps, and he was bummed because he'd rather go to San Felipe like most everyone else. But then it seemed the others had similar complaints. The family's weekend cabin in Aspen, a father-son hiking trip on the Incan Trail in Peru, a New York trip because her mother can't be away for too long from Bloomies and her much-adored Bergdorf Goodman. I was quiet in all of this conversation, stunned by what they were saying so nonchalantly. And I was also trying to figure out whether the mother was having an affair and why this girl wasn't disgusted or something. Was Bloomies the restaurant where her mother met up with this Goodman guy? Why wasn't this daughter outraged? Now someone directed the question to me, what was I doing during spring break? I'll be staying in Palm City, I said. Oh, wow, someone said in the darkness. Wasn't that in Palm Springs? Palm Springs was really cool during spring break. Someone piped in saying he'd never heard of Palm City, and before I could open my mouth and explain, another girl interrupted and corrected him. No, she believed it was on the island of Kauai, quite a paradise. And I felt my face growing warm, thinking of the effort it would take to try to explain Palm City. What should I say to these people? Should I tell them that my spring break was going to be spent in a barrio of mainly poor Mexicans with a few immigrant Germans, Poles, and Swiss sprinkled about? Should I tell them I lived in a modest, no, I wouldn't say ramshackle house with a bedroom I'd shared my whole life with four other sisters? Should I mention that we only had one bathroom for the 11 of us? They would never in a million years understand. So instead I said, it's kind of an off-the-beaten-path resort on the Pacific Ocean. Only a, few mile of, uh, only a few families have vacation homes there, and we all fly there during vacations, you know, spring break, winter break, summer. Then before I could even get the words, oh shit, out, a little handmade cigarette in white rolled paper, a joint, was being passed around. I froze, absolutely terrified and panicky. This was my first time at a pop party. Is that what this was? And if I thought my high school yearnings essay would earn, earn me a condemnatory letter Y pinned to my bosom, you can imagine what I thought being at a par pop party would get me. Yes, a lifetime sentence at Alcatraz with never a gentle little bird friend anywhere near my prison window. As I was trying to entangle my folded legs to get up, the joint was passed to me. I stared at it until the guy next to me reached for it and then showed me how to take a deep drag and hold my breath a few moments. Then he passed it back to me and I tried it, did exactly what he said, though my hands were trembling as I took my virgin toke. The smoke burned my throat and immediately I felt parched and dry. I coughed and sputtered, reached for my bottle of soda for relief. A few people chuckled, but nobody was paying too much attention to me as I eagerly waited to take a turn for an expert drag of the joint. But already I could feel a buzz in my brain, like when I drank two cups of black coffee to pull an all-nighter for the paper due the next day. Only this buzz felt different, like an out-of-body experience, as if I were some ghost hovering over this campfire, watching these college kids, feeling detached from this group. 
and this terrified me and made me sad at the same time. And I was thinking about Elton John's new song, and, and maybe he was right, and I should have just stayed on the farm, forget all this highfalutin university stuff, because this was not my world, and never would be my world. Just go back to my plow. And when they passed me the joint again, I took it, looked at it a moment, and then passed it on, because I was thinking that my future lay beyond the yellow brick road, and then I felt like crying and laughing and I didn't know why. Thank you.